Welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number 302, recorded Sunday, yes, Sunday, <laughs> September 23rd, 2018. I am your host, Ron Land, a.k.a. Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Headmaster Don. Everybody. Rick Alvarez. <sighs> and his beer can. <laughs> and Mohawk Jim Black. Oh. Yes, yes. After a short absence, I am back, channeling a little bit of Swage, a little bit of Daniel Ross, trying something different. You know, with the you look more like I, the Red Rooster, huh? You look more like the Red Rooster from WWF back in the eighties. I'd be okay Actually, with that. He he got an action figure. <laughs> I love an action figure. You look more cool. like a generic bi- biker guy from a Mad Max movie, the kind that just sort of get hey, the one that gets uh, gets killed early in the movie. Hey, yeah, if, if it means I can star alongside Michael Berryman, that would be golden. Yeah. Like, Man, like he, he falls Michael off in the desert and we never see him again. That's fine. <laughs> as long as I get a as long as I get a paycheck. Did you yes. say Mad Max? Mad, Mad Max. Max. You, you said Mad Max, right? Yeah. Mad I was Max. trying to figure out, what is Mad Max? Is that like a sci-fi channel, you know, bad... It, it, it's Sci Fi Channel's attempt to remake uh, Robot Jocks. <sighs> With sharks. You mean, uh, you mean Atlanta? Just like Planet. the one you just jumped, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, tonight we're, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Micromasters and Action Masters, the, uh, the originals, uh, in light of the Transformers Siege, uh, War for Cybertron figures that's getting ready to come out. Uh, Micromasters are going to be featured uh, heavily in that line. Uh, We're going to look a little bit at that era. Plus, uh, by the time this airs, uh, the Bumblebee movie official trailer will have aired. Uh, We've been seeing some teasers, but the first official trailer uh, should air as of this recording tomorrow, uh, I believe it is. It's supposed to be 3 a.m. Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to uh, talk a little bit about expectations and uh, things of that nature regarding the upcoming Bumblebee movie. Uh, I believe it's going to be dropping in December sometime. Do you know yep. what the exact date is? Christmas. Uh, is it on Christmas Day? I believe so. Uh. The, the, the first the first trailer we got said Christmas. So. Well, well that I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with that. that Just, Christmas that, means November, dude. Yeah. Or like early Christmas November. Christmas November. <laughs> That's fine. Turkey and presents, I'm good. Uh, but uh, we're going to be uh, talking about all those things. Um, but first, uh, I want to uh, add December another... December 21st. December 21st? Okay. Uh, that's technically... Christmas week. Christmas still, week. Still enough time for parents to run out and get their kids Bumblebee toys after taking them to see the movie. God knows they'll stock enough. Yeah, there'll be plenty, I'm sure. <laughs> Think back to 2007. It's going to be like that plenty all the first over wave. again. Yeah, it'll be the first two waves and nothing else. It'll be yep. a Bumblebee, Battle Damage Bumblebee, not Shade Bumblebee. <laughs> Deep Malibu Sea Bumblebee. Recovery Effort Bumblebee. Yeah. Uh, economic Crash Bumblebee. Yeah, uh, Super uh, Intelligent Street Luge Bumblebee. Me Too Bumblebee. Jim Black Mo- Mohawk Bumblebee. Breast Cancer yes. Awareness Bumblebee. <laughs> no. Abandoned. <laughs> Abandoned movie concepts, Bumblebee, and Barricade. <laughs> It'd be like ten Bumblebee. It's like the uh, Mattel uh, organized the uh, the case assortments or something. For yeah. this, well, let's this just line. do what we did for He Man. <laughs> Six He Mans per case and uh, a Skeletor. two Ram Mans. Why not? Yeah, and it, and it was Disco Skeletor too. You know that just on top of everything else. <laughs> And they wonder why that line failed. I thought the 2002 He-Man series was great. I loved sure. the I love the sculpts. I love the figures. I love the cartoon. I'm like this. They've got it going on. That this is the way He-Man should be. It, it felt yep. like He-Man, but they they canceled the line because it was doing poorly. It was doing poorly because all you had was He-Man and Skeletor on the damn yeah. shelves. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> the same thing it, happened to it. That happened to Thundercats in 2011. Yeah. And Bandai screwed up the line, and Cartoon Network wasn't getting that sweet, sweet money yep. from the cartoon from the figure sales. So they just basically Cartoon Networked it. You know that that's my verb now, Cartoon <laughs> Networked. Mm-hmm. Or or Voltron Force was another one. 
having the having the modular lions that could interchange. Never even got toys. <laughs> Scramble City lions. Yeah, they were. I mean, any of them could be the torso. I loved it. Well, essentially. Uh, but uh, I still want toys of that. Uh, I want to add a programming note. Uh, as, as you're probably viewing this, uh, well, you are viewing this as a pre-record um, because I'm I'm actually going to be at the uh, week uh, the monthly Transformers Collectors Meetup uh, as this is airing. So that's why this is being pre-recorded. Last week we didn't have an episode. I was attending a family reunion, and we didn't have uh, enough time, or I didn't have enough time to get together everybody to make a pre-record for that i do apologize for that but you know family comes first and you know sometimes we just can't do things like that uh but uh as you're viewing this uh 4 30 eastern uh i'm trying to kind of find that happy medium on a saturday to where uh we can all be on i know uh don's not been able to be on for several weeks uh because of his scheduling um and by moving it kind of in between where we were and where we have been doing it the last few weeks, I'm hoping that uh, I've found the happy medium where everybody can be on there. And Jim is so happy about this non-transforming Optimus Prime. Who cares, Jim? Nobody cares. <laughs> Only you. Shiny. <laughs> wait, wait, is that the uh, Hollywood Wheels ones? Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares, Jim. It doesn't That's transform. Nice it's like an action master segue. It's a glorified <laughs> RPM. It's a Titan class RPM. It's a. That's right. The the failures in the title RPM. Yeah. Rip them. <laughs> well, okay. Rip RPM. Ups. The RPM. That's not Power Rangers because that's not a failure. That's I all. had a whole line of rpms that i want to do that was all the war for cybertron and we never got into we never we never got them made uh, i owned like right. two that, of them i think that, i had prime yeah. and bumblebee and that was it <laughs> yeah um but before we go into uh the the uh, topic of discussion tonight uh let's do our ouch my wallet uh, Ouch My Wallet, as always, is brought to you by CaptureParade.com. Great toys, great prices, great service, where you can save even more on orders of $150 or more with free domestic shipping. And now you have the benefit of Stasis Pod, where you can place your orders now, uh, your, uh, make your purchases now, and have them hold until you're ready to ship, and then click on that ship, and it'll send it on its way. Um, also, Ripped Apparel. Check out RiptApparel.com and use the promo code TFYLPPOD and save 10% on your order. Unless there's a better promotion going on, then you'll get that one. But if there is not, then you will get 10% off your order with TFYLPPOD. Put that in the promo code there. Remember, it's yes. spelled Tiflip. 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 Yeah, Tiflip. Um, also, if you love what we do, go up there to the top of the screen and follow that little link. I know it's not clickable, but, you know, you can top that in. I think your fingers can do that. Uh, Patreon.com slash TFYLP helps us keep the lights on every day, or every, or every month, rather. Um, and without you, the fans, TFYLP could not continue. And we thank each and every one of you who continue to support us each and every month. Uh, Patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, so, Don, you haven't been on in a while. Um, you want to show off a, a few things that you've picked up yeah, a little bit? Uh, let someone else go first. I need to go grab the one thing, the main two, of the, one of the two things I want to show off. So, can Rick or Jim go real quick while I grab it? Sure, Jim. J Jim, why don't you show us that Optimus Prime you got, buddy? Oh gosh, Don, put your pants on. <laughs> your pants, not Duran's. <laughs> So, how can a man that me. large have such a flat ass? <laughs> Just <Jesus>. like me. <laughs> so, why are you so proud of, about this non-transforming Optimus well, Prime, Jim? It's just die-cast metal G1 Prime, or as that to doesn't G1 transform. Prime. It's essentially it's, a I don't know semi truck painted like Optimus model. Prime. I don't know if it's the same exact model of semi that the G1 was or, or not. I, I'm, I'm not sure, um, but overall, it's it's a neat display piece. You got G1 looking packaging with the with the grid in the background and uh you know vintage artwork. well i would hope so since it's g1 prime uh, well right 
I'm just saying, you know, overall, it's, it's, it's G1 Prime. Prim, let's put him in our, it's just, our model. It's packaging. really pretty for being only seven dollars at Walmart. You know, I'm, I'm I'm quite pleased with it. And then, other than that, There's I also cheap, have uh, invested cash, in the, uh, the this year's tribute to weak hip joints. Weak hip joints. Uh, abominus. Oh, yours has weak hip joints. Yeah, just hunger seems to have weak hip joints. Uh, I've, I've heard uh, other folks comment the same with theirs too, so it might be a. Mine seems okay. Does I'm, it? I have. I don't have any the best major part, issues with mine. The G1 rifle fits, and I'm happy about that. Nice. So I don't have to worry about any kind of third party add ons or anything. I have a slightly oversized uh, repro of the G1 rifle uh, he's using for mine. Uh, so nice. Sized. Ooh. Overcompensated. Super size. Yes. Overcompensating. Excellent. Speaking of overcompensating, Rick. Uh, well, uh, Jim, to you, uh, you know, I, I did end up getting the uh, large Titan class RPM Optimus, as well as the movie Optimus and movie Bumblebee. And, you know, because I'm that douche, I had to buy two of each, one to open and one to keep sealed. You're just a whore so, for Transformers. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing it. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen all the rest of those, I but I, I went ahead and passed on them all. But uh, the, this G1, I, just, I had to grab it. But uh, I did get something else, and I made a new friend in Canada. And um, I got myself a, uh, a Trax. I believe that's how you, you say it. Um, G1 Trax. Really nice. um, what I paid for this, you know what? Uh, I don't always advocate for this, but sometimes it's nice to be nice to people. So um, I was nice to someone, and um, he was nice to me in return. Uh, so <laughs> thank you to my friend in Canada. And um, Look in box. Look in box. I got a Case Fresh G1. Not a reissue. Not the reissue. No, I mean, that's that's a knockoff. Everybody knows Hot Rod was packed a, the other direction. That is this is minty. a real thing. That is yeah, minty yeah, fresh. Is a, yes, that, that is. I just want to show you that there is no can, crease on the back whatsoever. You can barely see the spoiler. So, um, yes, this one. Uh, yeah. Can, can you tell metal toes or plastic? Can you tell? Uh, you cannot. Okay. Oh wait, hang on. Actually, well, because the wheels would be different too. Wouldn't yeah, the they? wheels. Uh, well, it looks like it's uh, plastic wheels. Mm. How about that. So that would be plastic toes. It is rocks. plastic wheels. I I probably should have checked that. Um, prior right. to... <laughs> now it's now it's Still. worthless. Just throw it away. I'll Still. take it if you don't want it. Or just donate uh, it to me. You know, I I got it at a great price. So. I'm happy and with it, it. And it's not backwards. So, yeah, there's, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> I got a, a G1. I got some G1s. G1s. Yeah. So, G1s. Speaking of G1s, Don. Yes. You're yes. a G1 collector. <laughs> I, I, is he, though? I'm 49. I'll be 49 next year. I've collected it all. Some I wish I hadn't in retrospect, but that's beside the point. Instead of playing with your toys now, you gum them once you take your take your dentures out. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, fought, fought the uh, SDC Madness at Hasbro Toy Shop and got Monkey Primal. Ooh. Got him. <laughs> Haven't had a chance to him. But got him. I Here's saved a thing. whole 25 cents uh, by ordering the Japanese one through Orson. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, Does see, Japanese I, one come in the same package? Uh, yeah. don't know. It it's supposed to, it, it's, they're using this picture as a placeholder on Amazon Japan. So, and what's the difference between the domestic we, versus Japanese? don't know. There is we no difference know. in the toy. Yes. And you what, enjoy what's it included. Cents are on. Yes. Put, put that towards your car. Yeah. Yes. But I'll be, but I'll be honest, since the power of the prompts, Optimal Optimus really is not a good looking figure to me. And I have, Optimal Optimus is, is the is the least likable mode for me of Primal's forms. Um, but this looks a lot better in a more uniform color. And plus, I'm not a big, you know, gotta catch them all kind of thing, but it's nice to have all of the 13 Primes. Yeah. I, did, I, did, I did get Predaking, so I've got all the Primes now. Um, so I got, I got Primal. 
No. Don't, don't do that. Massey attack. Yeah, he, he knocked something over. Hey, one of the other things I got last week, a uh, week before last, um, we've all talked about third party and how people replace things as better things come along. Uh, one thing I have not replaced is my Hercules. I like Hercules. I think it's a good, I think it still holds up. Hercules. Hercules. Fair, fairly well. Fairly well. Uh, I know Generation Toys, Toy World, they've all done better Devastators. I, I'm still a fan of my Green Giant, man. I yeah. still got that. Yeah. Uh, and and again, people, she said. It, you know, back in back in the day, there was a big debate over which of these two Devastators was the better version. I've got both, but I, I've got the yellow version just to you know counteract <laughs> that. But I picked up thanks to an eBay coupon the shattered glass version of Hercules called Perseus, and I got it. I got the set for about one fifty after eBay coupon and uh, selling some stuff on eBay. And then, and this set was a limited, a, a more limited edition than the Hercules sets, and it comes with the Rage of Hercules set add-on parts. So basically, I got about a, it was about, oh gosh, I don't know what that would have been in regular retail, but about one fifty, I got all six figures and that add-on kit. That's twenty about twenty-five bucks a figure. So can't beat that with an ugly really stick. Can't. Weren't they originally closer to like eighty a figure when they came out? Oh, uh, closer to a well, hundred. Yeah, this. This was only available as a, as a gift set, and it was. Okay. A bit, I think I think they did like maybe two thousand sets, and that was it. They did of this, but it's. But I, know, I know. I know Hercules. Whenever it came out, I bought each one of the uh, the components of it as they as they were released, and um, after it was all said and done, it was just shy of uh, of six hundred dollars that I'd spent on that combiner. I think- I think I got mine from around for about seventy nine to eight. I didn't pay quite the full price because I was getting them from, from from a guy in from a guy in China that was that had the free shipping, and he was about ten to fifteen less on each figure, so mine wasn't quite full retail. Yes, I know it's terrible. Your your window is oh. closed. Sorry, um, but the big thing that I picked up, uh, this is something that I I've, I've been looking at a long time. I never thought I would get it. Uh, Basically, I've got about another $150 in this figure, uh, thanks to some Donanomics. 7-Eleven Optimus Prime. Uh, the uh, Takara 7-Eleven Japan exclusive with uh, Optimus Prime in the white with the green highlights. He's got the green axe. Uh, he's got the uh, the sticker sheet included that has a 7-Eleven logo on it. If you can see, he has the like a watermelon flavored matrix in there. And he should have. They should have remolded that so there's like a slushy machine in there. Yeah, I was starting to say, and then have have him have like a uh, a little cup that he could hold. It looks like a slushy yeah. cup. Exactly. And there's the, what I think is one of the best looking. Pe- I mean, it's a very simple deco, but it really, really just sort of pops the the green and the orange against the white. I mean, that just really pops on the trailer. You know, it's kind of weird that Takara is willing to brand their characters like that. If you think about all the different crossovers that Takara has done, right? And that we really haven't seen that with Hasbro whatsoever, except for, you know, that one Target record that came out for Dark of the Moon. Why is that, I wonder? We, We saw the Valvoline guy, and we saw the the you know that wrecker at target um and the the better deluxe one would you know never came out in the states um i don't know i don't know why that is i can't i I can't tell you why that is but i you know like not that i'm advocating for this but you know why hasn't there been a you know optimus prime toys r us on the trailer or optimus prime with walmart or target on the trailer or a uh, new Pepsi Prime. Well, I mean, we had one 2007. How I mean, often? like an MP, though. MP prep, Pepsi Prime. That would be... Yeah, M- MP Pepsi Prime. And then the KO, the third-party one, would be Diet Coke. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Fresca? You know, if, but if they Fanta. really wanted to, to take Fanta. advantage of uh, you know, promotions with soda and things... Jim, you're, you're low. We can't hear you. Really? Yes. Your gain is, like falling off and also nobody loves you and you're also ugly oh yeah 
that's that's genetics. Yeah. Um, no, if if they really wanted to take advantage of uh, licensing as far as uh, different <coughs> beverages and things, they could do like uh, different variations of a Mountain Dew Optimus, and repaint. Optimus into the the color of the different flavors of Mountain Dew, like Live Wire, Code Red, you know, and, and all those. Well, well, I mean, you've had yeah. the different vape Optimuses. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the green, the red, the, red, the black. Uh, was there a brown one? I think I think there was a gray had, one. The gray one, yes. You had the uh, uh, iPad, iPod, uh, Optimus, and sound waves, and yeah. Well, uh, now, uh, well, now remember, Hasbro has done this once before. With Cookie Crisp Jazz, so it's not like it's they very have few a, and far between. But it wasn't. Though. But that wasn't Testing. branded as. Right. Hey, it's a jazz with a Cookie right. Crisp logo on exactly. it. It was just available through a, through a, you know yep. through that that the Cracker Jack cereal yep. and the Transformer cereal. But also, but also there is there has been the solicitation. All we have is a solicitation. We we have anything on it. A Optimus Prime MP10 Ghostbusters. Again, from Takara. Yes, from Takara. Uh, again, it's, but it's like, okay, I want to see how this turns out. If the yeah. if the trailer looks like a, a ghost trap, uh, I might be sold on that. And and Roller <laughs> might be redesigned to look similar to an Ecto One, which which would make sense to me. All right, all right. So like, you could take your Hollywood Wheels Ecto One, you know, available at Walmart for seven bucks, and put it in there, so you can deploy the Ecto One, but. You know, like, I think people are just missing the obvious. Like, I kind of want a proton pack. I just kind of want to see Prime move a proton pack. I mean, the, the trailer is inconsequential to me if he doesn't come with that proton pack. And then, dem uh, and then demand that uh, Sideswap give him his now. <laughs> right, that would actually be in the comic. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Sideswipe, that, give me your proton pack now. Now, <laughs> now with, with, with this, with this uh, Ecto Prime... Uh, are we doing like a like a full brown jumpsuit color scheme, or are we doing like the animated series and having like a like a white one and a blue one? And a... No, I... no. Oh, well, you, you know, again, we haven't seen anything, and yeah, it, and it's, uh, not, it's not slated till this time next year. Uh, See, I, there's I was... the uh, Evangelion um, Optimus as well. I have the I have the KO of that. So, um, you know, Ghostbusters kind of feels like it's two years too late. Uh, maybe they know something we don't. And we'll have to wait and see. Maybe, but like, I I, I don't know. It just kind of came out of left field. Yeah, I was I was it's hoping like when three quarters of the Takara releases. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the Street Fighter uh, generations figures. Yeah, yeah those I came out of them, nowhere. Like, why? Why do these exist? I mean, they're they're yeah, interesting. Was, they're a talking piece. I was kind of hoping when I first heard the solicitation for the Ghostbusters Optimus that it might be the um, Optimus Mark III with that being due out sometime next year and this Ghostbusters Optimus being due out later on in the year. They would be on the production line at the same time or roughly the same time. It may be the first recolor of it or something. No, nah, it, it's, according, to, according to what's been translated, is it is the MP10 mold. But I, I was uh, thinking that would be kind of a cool thing to, you know. But again, they would. That's probably going to be for a, a wonder. I keep wanting to say Wonder Swan, a Wonder Fest exclusive or something like that either. But something to keep our eyes on for. But you know, that's that's what I got. Uh, I got Punch, Counter Punch, uh, Repugnus. You stole my thunder. Time. That's <laughs> that's yeah. who I was going to talk about. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I haven't op I haven't opened my. I just have not had time to open mine yet with work and the way it's been. But that, that's what I've got mostly. Yeah, uh, I was going to talk about mine because I had mine nearby, real nearby. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I love this figure. It is a great toy. I uh, love the transformation on it. Um, looks great in all technically three modes. My biggest gripe about it is, well, two of them. One of them is the way Amazon shipped it. Uh, in a, uh, they shipped it in its in its brown inner case box, but they shipped that in a bubble mailer. Uh, mine arrived okay, yes. uh, although I've seen a couple people theirs arrived uh, completely smashed on one side, um, or smashed all together, and that's that, that's just unacceptable. If you're going to have, uh, and you're 
links are coming up in the in the video for some reason. Um, uh, but if you're going to have exclusives, don't treat them like like uh, you know the cheapest thing you got. Yeah. Um, my other gripe about this guy is that uh, I got hit with the uh, the bad QC again. Um, mine has, depending on which bot mode you have him in, has two of the same sided hands. Oh. Uh. Yeah. And it's, as you can see, it's put in by a pin. Um, one side is like upside down. So, yeah. Depending on if you have him in, if in, if he's in punch mode, it's his left hand. If it's if he's in counter punch mode, it's his right hand. Well, and you know it's 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 so weird because Repugnus came out fairly uniform. Well, I don't I don't recall hearing anything major about Repugnus having a QC issue, mm -hmm. and Blastoff still had a few of the lingering issues from from the original from the original use of the mold, but nothing really. That no one was unexpecting, unexpected. Yeah. yeah. But you know, for punch counter punch to be the last of what we can expect for, who knows how long, and have that plus the shoulder issue that's been popping up for a lot of people, that's just kind of disappointing. That the the last one of the three exclusives is possibly the worst QC version. Yeah. Okay. I've I've heard conflicting things on that. Is there a shoulder issue or isn't there? There some is. some there, folks there are saying is. it's upside down. Others are saying it's not. The, the little there's a little notch right, right there. If if you're watching the video, there's a little notch yeah. right there. Uh, it's on the bottom. If you get it out of package, uh, you can transform it. It just doesn't snug up as nice as it should. But if you invert them, which there's like literally no unscrewing or anything you have to do. You just uh, basically. Uh, Put the the chest flap down on the punch mode, and stick a uh, a little screwdriver or something down in there, and separate the orange from the blue, uh, just enough to pull that out, flip it over, and then slide it back on on each side, and then it goes right back in. There's no stress marks. It doesn't damage the toy unless you are ham handing it. Um, but I did mine, no problem, and it transforms perfectly now snugs up just just the way it should um yeah I, and i watched a video or two and people are saying it worked it's okay the way it is but over time with that part being upside down it may stress the, the plastic in the surrounding area with that notch just not supposed to be there so so they've determined it is in fact upside down it's not just it is us there mistaken. there was a guy that um i, I guess there's a reviewer or something other um on YouTube, had uh, uh, he uh, he claimed that it's not misassembled, and I believe Saber is either Sabertron or Allspark reported the same thing Allspark. based on uh, based on that guy's review. And that guy said, if you look at the promotional photos of it, it's it's installed that way. I'm, that I'm doesn't like, mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean jack. How many times have we seen mistransformed promotional photos? You know, it's like. Yes, it was probably mis the one that they photographed was probably misassembled, you know. So <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, you know. It, it, like you said, the designers it, are not there when they photograph them. No, uh, it's it's the photographers who are outsourced by Hasbro, working in the Hasbro building, who have to figure out on their own how to transform something. And same thing with the people who set up the uh, displays for. Uh, like Toy Fair, um, it's usually like the in-house photography team or uh, packaging team sometimes that has to hot glue them together without the designer being there for input. I, I just I keep thinking back to uh, the I don't know if you guys remember the Transformers display that was at the Indianapolis Children's Museum a while back, mm -hmm. and how they had RID landfill put together. Where where you had high tower heavy that. load and Grimlock all put together, but Wedge was like fifteen feet out in front of the rest of him. <laughs> you know, for whatever reason. It's like why? And you know it, Add representation of your brand. Exactly. But, you know, like I said, uh, the toy 
if you don't if you don't feel comfortable flipping that part around, it'll still transform. It should still be fine. Uh, it's just if if you're willing to just do a uh, literally, it took like three minutes to do it, if that, and that's being careful. Um, and again, like like no unscrewing of anything. Separated that part, flipped it, squeezed it back together. Everything's copacetic. Um, you know, if it was easy enough to pop that pin out, um, I'd flip the uh, hand, but it wouldn't do any good because it's the wrong side. If they gave me, I don't know, it just it just pissed me off. <laughs> but yeah. I still love this toy. It's a great mold. Looks great in all modes. Um, and you can't tell me that that uh, that, that counterpunch mold uh, isn't going to be used as a point blank at some point. I mean, it just screams. Even the car mode, you put a spoiler on it, I, I think it looks like point blank. Uh, yeah, so, one thing I was wondering again, about that. Again, Well, one, one thing I was wondering about that punch counterpunch mold, and, and I can't really tell looking at the, at the pictures. It, is it possible that at, at one time that mold may have been intended to be a combiner limb? It's possible. Because I wasn't sure how, how that inner chamber was was uh, put together as far as the head and all that in the torso. You know, it looks like it could have been engineered to where it could be that way, mm. but I don't think it is. But there's, there's no, like, hidden square peg or anything? Mm -mm. No. Because the chest of Counterpunch opens up, as you can see there, and that's yeah. where his uh, the car hood literally okay. folds up in there, and then stores away in his chest. Well, because I, I know he comes with a, with a, like a prime armor thing. So yeah, that's main. Uh, that's there specifically for the prime master. Or the yeah, the prime master that comes with him. You can stick it in the back of it, and he can use it as a weapon or stick it on the back of the car. Uh, I just set it aside in my parts box wonder how long before a third party comes out with a uh, kit for it. I, I'm, I'm hoping not yeah, if... But the, uh, cl but the club did a uh, combining, you know, counterpunch, you know? like but That was just counterpunch, though. Not, yeah, not so I, I don't know. Do, do we need that in our lives? No. <laughs> um, I think it was Trent Troop who actually came up with an idea. Um, since the club did punch counterpunch first... Um, at some point, uh, I think it was Trent and Greg Sepalak who said, we should do a Shattered Glass version called Kick Counter Kick. That, that sounds kind of cool. But ha is Counter Kick an actual word? <laughs> it, well, you know, punch, counter, punch, yeah. kick, counter, kick. It's, you know. Mm. Mm. It's... It's a fucking toy, Duran. Jesus <laughs> Christ. God mm. damn it, man. Mm. Meh. Speaking of meh, let's talk about Action Masters hey. and MicroMasters. <laughs> now, I'll make it no secret. Count me in. I never was a huge fan of Action Masters. I like the, uh, the designs of the characters, the original characters in Action Masters. Uh, and I love the fact that in recent years we've gotten some of those characters in transformable, uh, updated versions. You know, like we've got Croc in Titan Returns, exactly. Uh, we had, uh, what was it, Kickoff uh, in uh, the uh, BotCon set, right. um, which was actually one of my favorite decos out of all, a lot of the BotCon toys. Um well, can we start the conversation with this? Um, we've we've known Transformers for a while, all of us, because we're older guys. How, how do you guys in general feel about Action Master characters being made into transforming figures? I love well, it because it's done right. Yeah, yeah. As as long as the alt mode represents the parts the figure had originally. Well, to make it make sense. Well, then that, and I'm glad you brought that up because what I was getting at was Croc. Okay. So Croc was made, you know, he was clearly a, a plane, a bomber type of alt mode. And the headmaster version that we got is, um, is a crocodile. 
but I'll be honest, it's actually so much better than the Skull Cruncher mold that it doesn't flop apart. Just for having a better quality version of that mold, I really don't mind. You know, it, it, it's, you know, and, and really, I mean, it's not... Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on a tangent, kind of, but it's, it talks about this stuff, too. I did not, I did not like Action Masters when they came out. I found the concept stupid. I thought it would made no sense to have Transformers that could not transform. They were basically Target Masters or Micro Master kind of with the play sets that, you know, the vehicles that transform, like the Micro Master stuff and things like that. Through the years... Or trying to be too much like G.I. Joe. Yeah, too much like If, G. I. if I wanted to play with G.I. Joes, I'd play with G.I. Joes. I mean, and again, when those came out, I was almost 20 when those came out. So, I mean, I was an older collector already by that point. I mean, I was 14 when the line started, as it was. I would like to think I've gotten better through the years, and I recognized for Action Masters what they were trying to do, trying to make it more compatible with other figures, with your G.I. Joes and your other similarly scaled figures, to, so kids would have more stuff to play with. You know, they could, you know, play with it too. But... I just never really liked the concept of Transformers that couldn't transform. Now that I'm older, and I see what we're getting from, like, Flame Toys, and we're getting these super great-looking figures that don't transform, but because they don't transform, you get the sculpt, you get the detail, you get the articulation. And I think, as a fandom, most of us, if not all of us, have progressed to the point where if the characterization that we love in the media the character is from is represented in the figure that we're getting not having an alt mode doesn't make that it doesn't seem to make it that big of a thing anymore I have a counterpoint to that but I'll let Rick say his as do I alright so thank you so my my first counterpoint is this the world of toys, as I see it, is splitting into two. There's um, the world of uh, collectibles for adults and the world of toys for children. The middle doesn't exist anymore. The middle is video games. All right, so you're either an adult collector and you have your parameters for what you want to collect or you're a child collector and you're collecting because you're a child and you're playing with them. Here's the thing, though. So many Transformers and and Marvel and DC and Star Wars, they're, they're all victim of this. Halo as well. Uh, fall victim now to the five or four points of articulation jumbo 12-inch finger. Yep. Arms and legs move. Now, it may be a cool representation of the character. Most times mm-hmm. it's pretty bland. But 25, 35 years from now, the kids who are playing with those toys, what are, what are they going to want as a masterpiece? Are they going to want a high, highly articulated version of Heat Wave and Chase that look like the show? Or are they going to want Heat Wave and Chase that actually transform? Right. And it's, I mean, I totally, I totally see your point. I totally agree with it. It's just, I think as a fandom, and I think this is, boils down to I, the success of IDW. Again, I haven't read a lot of the IDW. I haven't read anything since after All Hell Megatron. Since before All Hell Megatron. Oh, but that, that's when it got good. Well, I was mad with the whole Simon Furman lack of Headmaster Sunstreaker thing. That was beside the point. Um, the characterizations they put into the comics I think became more important to a lot of people than the transforming and the alt mode. I, I, I just believe that to be the case for a lot of people. That's why we're seeing Flame Toys doing that drift, doing that Tarn, doing the Star Saber, doing the Victory Leo that sort of braves up the Star Saber. Cause that's but very is that bad. not a response to third party, which has been specifically Make Toys, which has been inspired greatly by the comics? It, it could. I mean, it probably is to some degree. It's just, I don't think a non-transforming Transformer figure is facing the same levels of bile that it was getting when the concept first came out. 
because the characters these toys represent are more important to be captured properly than and, and I, the inclusion of an alt mode may cause the, the the figure to be less than what it needs to be to be that to be that character representation on somebody's shelf. You know, I, I think I think it can go. It depends on the person, uh, but I mean, I've talked to people at shows and stuff and online where that drift that Flames Toys did. That's they love that drift because it's so expressive, it's so solid, it's so poseable. They don't mind not having the alt mode because you can. It looks like drift. It feels like drift. It poses like drift. The alt mode is not a a a, a missing part anymore. But my counterpoint uh, point is kind of twofold. Uh, kind of build on what you're saying there, though. Yes, it is nice to have a figure, and that was that's a lot of people's argument. Uh, for Action Masters. I know Orson loves Action Masters because he said it gave us a more cartoon accurate, or at the time, the most cartoon accurate, uh, most posable version of the G1 characters that we had mm-hmm. up until recent years. Um, you know, you could they were more playable, I guess, uh, in, in, some sen- in some sense. But in this day and age, there's absolutely zero excuse to have a non-transforming transformer that a looks good in both modes and um, transforms. You know, it, it there's there there's no excuse. There's no excuse for it because in this day and age, they uh, the the technology has advanced to where they can put the detail, they can put the transformability, they can put the poseability in there. We've gotten some absolutely insane versions of characters that we never would have imagined we could get. I mean, look at half the uh, the, the masterpiece line now uh, or the uh, the, ma- the in its entirety and the third party masterpieces that's out there. I mean, some of these are like like the best I don't see how we could get any better versions of some generation 1 characters. Yeah, it's See, the problem is though, it's all based on the medium that you're from. If you're like me and you can, and you grew up with G1, G2. Well, even if it's comic, and that that, that adds to my. But, but my, here's the thing: Transformers is a brand, right? It has to be licensed out to make money, and Hasbro cannot license out a transforming figure because that has to be basically. produced by them. Because they're competing on its own sales. competition. That has to be produced by them, and then there's you know issues with the whole Takara thing as well. That has to be anything that transforms has to. That's a figure. They can't have a collaboration like they the, the transform come from Hasbro. Well, I mean, they cannot. So when you see that you know the Hot Flames Drift and uh, you know the other, I, I excuse me, I forget the names. Maybe it's Metal Force, Optimus, and, and Megatron. Yeah. Um, the lar- the larger figures that that the Moss Toys demand a premium at retail. Uh, those are licensed knowing that they are just figures and that they are not going to be transforming in, in any way. And it's a, it's a niche market because what is that drift uh, at retail? Uh, fresh out of the case, 300 bucks? I believe so. And then there's a... a that alienates you know, a lot of people right off the bat. And then, the, I mean, I, I'm, you know, spend crazy and even I'm like, Shh, I do love drift and... But then if I get that, I have to get the red one, too. And the red one's even harder to get and even more expensive. So, you know, for that reason, it's pushed me away for now. But, you know, there is a sensitivity when it comes to uh, asking to have a license to make something that a toy company itself can make. Uh, The only example that I can think of as it pertains to Hasbro, are the Jumbo Star Wars Kenner figures and the Jumbo G.I. Joe figures. Uh, those are the only instances where I can... And th- those, you can say, were already designed. Yeah, You mean, right. you mean, the, ones, you mean the ones from Super 7? Uh, I don't think it was Super 7. Maybe, maybe it was General Giant. Okay, okay. Um, so, you know, there is a sensitivity. Uh, like Mattel. Mattel could have, you know, Super 7 threw a whole monkey wrench in, in this theory. But 
Mattel was very sensitive at a, at one point about licensing out things for He-Man that they could in turn do themselves, such as the jumbo He-Man figures, yeah. which General Giant did approach him about. But Mattel's like, no, we're a toy company. We can make those. And now with Maddie Collector being gone, that whole paradigm has shifted. You know, people change right. uh, positions and, you know, but, ideas but change. Basics so. sound. But, sound. Yeah, you, you can't have a, a transforming figure that's not made by Hasbro Takara. What uh, so now? And, and then, why can't like a third party company design the the there, how it's supposed to look? But Hasbro or Takara do the transformation. You know, it's like a collaboration. I mean, that's called IDW, right? Yeah. Now, what? Why are you paying anybody? See, they already own those assets, though. Once IDW draws a comic book, Hasbro automatically owns those assets. But you know, so it's just. I think I think we're I think we're getting to the point where we've, we've all said we want so we want to get rid of this eighty four not that not that we don't like eighty four eighty five eighty six but I don't know about y'all but I'm getting kind of done with eighty four I mean, eighty five eighty six to a degree. I how love the minor wars. You know how many optimists do you need? Yeah, it's like it's like this is why Siege is doing absolutely nothing for me outside the Ultra Magnus. And a couple of the target masters, maybe the micro masters. Once I see them, I don't know. Sideswipe, I don't care about at all. I'm in it for like, Cog and Lionizer. Yeah, it's like having a Star Wars line without R2D2 or Han or Luke or Vader, right? Or a Stormtrooper. You know, so, you know, you're gonna have to get it, right? You know, so you basic, have to get through those guys to get Ahsoka Tano. Yeah. It's right. just I, I just think I just I think with the toy technology we're getting to the point where they see people are buying hot toys people are buying sideshow they're buying these high dollar high end posable figures yes they don't transform the characters never did or whatever the case may be are, are they transformers collectors or are they collectors of that genre well I've seen I've seen people online that show off their collections that are transformer collectors and they collect. The, the one six scale stuff as well. I, you know what? Maybe just, a better question is the statues. Okay. Those thousand dollar statues of six hundred, seven hundred dollar statues. Yeah. That now that's that's something I don't pay much attention to except for the the beautiful beautiful Unicron lamp that I will never own. Um, but uh, I just I just think what they're doing is they're trying to get that market of those people that want a the detail of the robot mode, the posability, the the look of the robot mode is more important than the transformation. Yes, it's a very small market, but it's there. And I don't think Flame Toys would be planning all the stuff they've got coming up. I mean, I've heard people say that Tarn that they're, they're, that's to be coming out relatively soon. Now again, I don't I haven't read the comics, so I don't know. But they say that Tarn looks like he stepped out of the page. Now, I'm, I'm a big Edouard fan, and so, maybe my position's been confused, but I love action figures based off these characters. But I like them in the c adult collectible side of the spectrum. Not I, I really don't want to see non-transforming characters on the kitty well, side. To finish I like up, that Drift, that Tarn. So, 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 those are so on basically, the adult side. Basically, kind of like we got with uh, the robot replicas. Yeah, but those those are kind of cheap, though. You know, yeah. those are ten bucks. Yeah. You know, twelve bucks, whatever they were. Yeah. You know, like we're talking about something that's like it, it's a, if it's a minimum hundred dollars, yeah. it's that's an adult collectible. So more right. more like a more like a Figma or something like that. Yeah, yeah. figure art. You know. Yeah. Figma. Yeah. Um, but see, how many but, kids are playing with those? Versus how many adult, how many adults are putting them on a shelf or in a glass case? But to finish up my point, though, my counterpoint a while, a while ago on uh, that Don had, you know, he he was talking about how if people really love the media, they and there is a really really good version of a character out there. If I if I am I saying this right, Don? Yeah, if, it's if, like. IDW they may transform, but it's just more in it's more in in service to 
the plot or driving the story forward. Well, see, my it's, po- my, it's, it's my, not it's not it's not a, it's not as a visual thing to enjoy when yeah. it's a blah, 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 they're, they're done. Yeah, my my counterpoint to that though is the Marvel comics back in the eighties in the early nineties, whenever we were going through the the Nucleon Quest, mm-hmm. and that was the the explanation for uh, the Transformers that couldn't transform. You know they. They had, you know, they had went through the nucleon conversion, or I, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, but the storyline, I really enjoyed that storyline by Simon Furman. Uh, I believe it was, was it, that was Furman, wasn't it? The, yeah. The yeah. nucleon quest. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that, that story arc. It was a really good story. And it made sense why you would have Transformers that didn't transform. But to me... Personally, that did not translate well into toys. Um, or the toys that were on the shelf that were supposed to be representing that era in the comics really didn't fit it to me. I mean, it, it, they just seemed they, they seemed really cheap. They looked really cheap. They didn't transform. Yeah, the characters were interesting, but just having a cool character wasn't enough you know if they had like depicted them in the comics let's say uh some of them you know we we saw them before they uh they had been stasis locked into a mode and saw them transform we knew what their alt modes were i would be angry if we had no other version of the toy than the one that we got which was the action masters you know, let me let me just make a uh, <clears throat> quick side note here. So I was living out of the country when the comics was was happening, and I moved back to the United States uh, early '90s. And my first issue of Transformer Comics was issue 80. Mm. All right, that was the oh. first issue I ever picked up. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> this is and, a great issue. You know, I can't wait till the next one. And I couldn't understand what does it mean, number 80 in a four limited four issue limited series. What does that mean? <laughs> so. Um, so, you know, looking back on the comics now and how things were marketed and how, you know, certain toys were, you know, kind of pushed to be in there, um, I think we can all be grateful that the vehicles for the Action Masters didn't make it into the, sh- into the comics. Like you didn't see Optimus driving around in that truck or Wheeljack driving around in his hot rod car. That looks so ridiculous. Star- yeah. Starscream flying around his little helicopter. I kind of want to see that now. No. <laughs> you know, I kinda, on, who even, doesn't even, want to even, see that? This even, guy. <laughs> even Thanos got a helicopter. Come on. Uh, no. Speaking of bizarre, um, third, you know, licensed goods. Anybody see the Thanos saxophone? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. There's a Thanos oh, yeah. saxophone. Really? Yes. There's a Thanos saxophone. Man, that's... Even I admit that that's taking licensing too far. Wow. Star Wars toilet paper. Now you can have the same ideas that that's George Lucas commodity. has. <laughs> that, Baseball's that's the flamethrower. That's a talking piece. The Thanos saxophone? I mean, what is a kid supposed to do with that? Blow How it? Does eh. he enjoy the saxophone? And it Thanos was any Thanos. It's, it's not even purple. Kenny <laughs> G was Thanos the whole time, and we missed it. It's Halfway through the song, God. snap your fingers, and the song, rest of the song disappears. <laughs> just, just like in a jazz club. Right. Nobody got that joke, Jim. Oh, you'll play the saxophone. You got a guy up there singing, snapping his fingers. No. No. You guys need to get out more. Go see live music. Jim. I mean, I like it was music. a bad joke. Bad. Yeah, joke. it's a bad saxophone. Yeah. Anyway, Micromasters. Which is totally worse. Now, this is something around that era I really got behind. Um, it was toward the tail end of me collecting toys altogether. Uh, around this time, it was whenever I was starting to get interested in Dino Riders. Uh, I got really latched onto the, those. But 
The Transformers that still held my interest were the MicroMasters. MicroMasters, I believe, came around as a answer to the Micro Machines, which were really hot at that time. Yep. Um, maybe a year or so earlier, but you know, Hasbro says, "Hey, we can do that, but we can make them transform." And I, I really d- digged them. You know, I mean, they and were it, they were great. And it's interesting that these were all new characters. It wasn't just like, "Hey, it's MicroMaster Optimus. It's MicroMaster exactly. Gears." However, when I was a kid, I had the Off Road Patrol, and to me, powertrain um, was tougher. Yeah, <laughs> I was playing with like MicroMaster Ironhide and MicroMaster yeah. uh, Gears, and uh, you know, as a kid, my one of my favorite things ever was the uh, Countdown Base, and yes. I played the hell out of that thing. Man, I can't tell you how many times I launched that rocket off that off that launch pad. That was one of my favorite toys of all time. Sounds um, like me when I was 19. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, Don's I, like, oh, God. <laughs> I, I was 10, you know, so Don was like 25-ish. So, but a- anyway, you know what? Man, this is almost 20 years ago when eBay was just getting started. Um, a bunch of MicroMaster designs showed up on eBay. So, Dom, do you remember that? When a bunch of the unused MicroMaster designs showed up? I don't, I don't remember don't. that. Some I, some I, of them, man, I wish I had pictures of them. Uh, some of them were great. Um, a bunch of them showed up on eBay at, at the same time, and they all went for like four or 500 bucks. Um, one of them was a belt. You it had a, It was a racetrack that you clipped around yourself, and it was a belt. And it came with a MicroMaster. And I think all the MicroMasters were redecos. Um, another one was a wristband that had a piece of track, like like a Hot Wheels track. It's, you know, pliable. You'd unclip it, lay it down. You can roll your MicroMaster on it. And it connects to all the other bases and such. Um, I, I don't remember that. The, the closest thing I remember was, was a G2, the GoBot racing rig. That's the closest thing I remember. to. But that. that's a spy changer, though. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, you know, that's the closest thing I remember. I don't remember anything with MicroMasters along those lines. Yeah, you know what? I got to ask uh, Carl Hartman because uh, him and I, you know, it seems him and I are the only ones who really remember that. Yeah, I don't remember it at all. And I was all over eBay around that time. Um, you know what? It was 2004, 2003 ish, I want to say. Um, so go back and look on eBay. Um, there was a whole bunch of, you know, action master concepts I had found at, at Hasbro. I know I've talked about them before. So, some of them escaped me, but you know, there was Gnaw, the Sharkticon. There was Thundercracker and it was an all new sculpt. Uh, Cliff Jumper, all new sculpt. Blue Streak was an all new sculpt. Superior, uh, I think, right? So, yeah, Superion. These are ones that never got released. Never got released. Bruticus, uh, which uh, got uh, reworked into uh, what's his face. Um, there was Omega Supreme, and on the card it actually said Omega Supreme. So, and that's what ended up being Omega Supreme. <laughs> Somewhere along the lines, Spring. somebody made up, you know, made a mistake in the name. Uh, tracks Thank God it never came boat. out Omega Sperm. Tracks came out with a boat, <laughs> and the boat would transform by flipping upside down. It was a speedboat, and would transform by flipping upside down. Uh, there was Perceptor, there was Predaking. So it would become a gun. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. Turn the boat yeah. upside down. Yeah. Upside down submarine. Yeah, there was um, Hound. There was G1 Hound. Uh, and there was a bunch of other new characters, which, you know, didn't have names at the time. Um, but they were all found. Uh, I found them all in that in a big pile in the warehouse, uh, along with the fourth Decepticon headmaster that I've talked about, the uh, Manta Ray, which is actually in the vault book. It's in the vault book. Um, yeah, all that stuff got thrown out. It has said that we never got that. When I left. Yeah. It's a shame that all that... that I had collected all that art in one place to preserve it. And then when I left, they just 
conveniently bundled destroyed it up and out. destroyed it. Yeah, everything got thrown out. Um, oh, there was also Action Master Blur. Hmm. Remember that one, Action Master Blur. Yeah, Blur and Na were the only two like post movie guys that I really remember seeing. Oh well. Yeah. Well, no, I liked I liked the Micro Masters a lot more than I ever did Action Masters. The uh, the Autobot Battle Patrol was Sun Runner, Flak, and the I, that's that, one think, of my that, favorites. That's one of my yeah. favorite sets. The only thing I towards the end I really got tired of was some of the sameness. Yeah, a lot. Like, they repainted the crap out of them. Well, not yeah. just that, but just it's like it's like Minicon syndrome. <laughs> yeah, it was sort of like you know, for every one that you got that was tote. That had a slightly different transformation. Uh, you, you, they were all like road handler or swindler. You know, flip, flip, flip the feet back, flip the hood back, raise the arms. And that just got to be really kind of annoying after a point when you had interesting designs like, you know, the Autobot Battle Patrol and you had Tote. Ah, you know. These guys. Ah. When I was growing up, that was Gears, Huffer, Trailbreaker, and Ironhide. No question about it. Yeah, you know, of that whole set, I've always liked Tote the best, and I don't know why. He's just, uh, just a little. Yeah. I was little always, always partial to Powertrain. I liked him. Too. The high, high jump was my favorite. He had, I thought, the coolest transformation. Now, my favorite, uh, I liked the Autobot Battle Patrol, but my favorite was the Autobot Race Car Patrol. I love Tailspin, Swindler, Road Handler. I mean, Tailspin, he, they, they each had like a unique look to them. Yeah. They look like they could translate well into a larger toy, in my opinion. You know, if we still had the molds for these, wouldn't it be great to just redeco these as like the Onslaught, Vortex, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, Swindle. Brawl. Uh, Cybertron Defense Scattershot. You, you take High Jump and you make them into Swindle or... Yeah, make uh, make so, them look like the uh, World War Two versions. Somebody still has some MicroMaster molds because have you seen Dollar Tree lately? No. Oh. There are uh, there are knockoffs uh, like little, little military vehicles. One of them looks like it was maybe one of the Armada Minicons or Classics Minicons. I can't tell for sure. But that's one not of a, them. That's I'm, not a micro one of them. Though. I'm pretty sure is Flak. But they're 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 larger. They're more like Legend scale now. Hmm. Uh, but I'm pretty sure one or two of them are, are MicroMaster molds. So that, I, I think they're still floating around there somewhere. Hmm. Well, the, warehouse. the factory that made them, I'm sure, is probably either long gone or the the molds are lost. I would I would I would assume. Why would we not have something like that anymore? Uh, to me, it yeah. seemed like it would have been um, something that could have been done back around Armada time. You know, the Unicron trilogy. Uh, you know, just like R.I.D. brought back the Combaticons as uh, as the Combatrons or well, just you know, ruination, yeah, uh, ruination. <laughs> Combatrons. Um, uh, it would have been really neat to see some of the MicroMasters come back as Minicons. You know, just with an added Minicon port. You know, that would have been know, that would have been cool. It's funny that um, we never got a uh, we we never got Metroplex reissued or retooled. When the MicroMasters came out, um, yeah, it would have he would have been a perfect place set. You know, we got him in as Metro Titan in Japan. Yeah. yeah. It, it, at that, but at that point, the the co- the the production cost of that figure might have been more than what they wanted to put into it. Kind of like down, the uh, you know. the RID Bullet Team right now, or Bullet Train. You know, it's just not cost effective to make oh, something that like was, that anymore. That was, they they'd be twenty nine dollar Studio Series figures Voyagers at this point with that much plastic. Sure. Hmm. Uh, so wh- what do you think, MicroMasters? How do you think those impacted the uh, the Transformers brand as a whole? I mean, back in the day, I really didn't see them as something that was like game changing. I just saw I saw them as something cool. But I think really they were a prelude to the Transformers future. Uh, I think without MicroMasters, we may have never gotten many cons. Didn't uh, didn't Aaron Archer actually say on a, on on the show here at one time, or maybe at a convention, 
that he was inspired to do many cons because of the MicroMasters? Wasn't that something he said? I can't remember. I don't remember. I, I don't remember that. I, I mean, I it's could, certainly I possible. Could see that. But, I, you know, I, I here we are all these years later. MicroMaster started in 89, right? Or 1990. 90, I believe. And um, MicroMasters? Maybe, maybe 89. It, and yeah. here we are finally revisiting some of those characters. And it's it's a good time to be an old G one collector. It's you're you're getting G one reissues in the stores. It's amazing that you know I I assume one day I'll find one in the store, but <laughs> I'll I can take my kid and I can show her a G one transformer like the one Daddy's has in his in his cases. And I can buy it, and I can give it to her, and play with it with her, and put it on her shelf. Well, they, they are they, they are starting to show up at stateside. Yeah, I'm whenever uh, this week. What the well, I, I power of the primes? The hot rods. Oh, the reissues. Yeah, the reissues. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple extra hot rods because Walmart was nice enough to pack both hot rods that I ordered inside of a box that wouldn't fit one hot rod. So, I have two smashed hot rod boxes. Uh, so I'm going to give one to each of my my girls. Um, but I have this hot rod box for me, for daddy. Ah, uh-huh. and then they're going to ask daddy, why is, why is my hot rod backwards in the box? That's, that's why we have locks on these cases. Yeah. We have locks, big <laughs> bulletproof locks. So they could even shoot a gun at them and not bulletproof, yeah. really. I mean, they could shoot the glass, but you know, they can't shoot the clock, the lock. <laughs> so, so I had a thought and it and it escaped. My astro train of thought transformed and flew into space. All right. All right. Things we wish we could have seen in Action Masters as a kid, right? Besides G1 characters. Well, wait a minute before we go back to Action Masters. No, no, what? I'm sorry. I meant Micro Masters. I meant Micro okay. Masters. Things we wish we could have seen in Micro Masters as a kid besides G1 characters, right? A triple changer would have been really cool, right? How about a base, like a transport vehicle that was actually a G1 character, like Astro Train or, you know, G1 Optimus that well, opened up, or Ironhide and it transformed and opened up into a playset. Um, <coughs> Grimlock. We never got MicroMaster Dinobots. Or, or a MicroMaster Megatron that could actually fit in the hand of a bigger Transformer. At the time, the the two they they wouldn't have been able to connect the two. It, nobody would have thought about that. But yeah, it's, um, I really I sitting here I can't think. I mean, I like the MicroMasters we got. It I think, but I think by the end, by the time it was done, I was kind of like with mini cons. If I see another mini con again. It'll be, you know, too soon. But you know, MicroMasters, I mean, they, I'm just jealous of Japan that they got the combiners. Yeah, that that was going to be my 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 wish back in Generation One. We never had combining outside of the two uh, the ones that you could put the two together, but we never had like 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 Gestalt combiners. There's yeah. a word you haven't heard in a while. We never got Gestalt combiners. The we got was in the United States. That was a pretender. That wasn't. That was before right. the MicroMasters. I, I get that. I'm, I'm just saying that the scale of the individuals. That that's the closest we got here in the states until Transformers Universe, when we finally got uh, Six Turbo and all them. Yeah, but that's years later. We're at, talking at about Sears back, and back in the day. And yeah. how crazy is it that those actually came out in the U.S. all those years later? Yeah, at Sears, at Kmart, at KB. And now oh, they're so hard cool. to find we, weird, in, weird them, yeah. in and of themselves. Now, I mean, it would, it would have been cool to have, you know, MicroMaster Jazz, MicroMaster Optimus, MicroMaster Ironhide, and Bumblebee, and uh, oh, Overload. I think was like the closest thing we got to some kind of Optimus Magnus looking thing. Yeah, he had the, he had the yeah. car, car transport, and, and on the figure itself had the chest windows and all that. Yeah. Now, what about the? 
I, I, I want to talk about this little joke that, uh, that, ooh, ooh. Has, that really slipped by the Hasbro marketing and, and everything back in the day. Is this My, Erector? No. Erector is, is one thing. No, this is. Yeah. Erector is one thing. And, and by the way, that is the only MicroMaster, uh, complete MicroMaster I have to this day. Um, but what about the tagline for the MicroMasters? Micro size has the power to surprise. How did that slip by the censors? <laughs> because only you know only a dirty an, mind it was still an age of innocence <laughs> it was still nobody's an age like of that innocence. anymore <laughs> you know like headmasters yeah it yeah, was headmasters. still an age of thrust thrust i mean well, we still have thrust we, you know uh ripper Wind. snapper cutthroat you know we still we still have those there was a time where we couldn't use the name cutthroat or breakdown really? Really? Yeah, because yeah, they were seen. Nobody wants to think of their toy as breaking, so you can't call him Breakdown. Yeah. So we made a character called Breakdown in the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here you go. Of, of which they didn't release the toy in the U.S. But it was the right colors. Right. On, on the cartoon or on the show. Yes, was he was he supposed to be a, a straight up homage to uh, G One Breakdown because of that, or do you Are recall? You dead end and knockout. No breakdown, prime breakdown. breakdown. Yes, because his nothing to do with G One version. I know, but his colors was very similar to no. G One Breakdown. Had nothing to do with it. Just a complete new, just rebranding. Had nothing to do with the G1 version at all. Oh, that's sad then. Because uh, whenever he co came up on screen, I'm like, at least his colors are right. <laughs> we, uh, we always said, um, out of all the Decepticons, uh, Knockout was the only one that couldn't die. We said he cannot die. He has to live to be in the next TV series, which is why he joins the Autobots at the end. But he I wasn't was really next... for him jo joining the Autobots, but... Um, we were very adamant that he had to live. Huh. Well, it just sort of shows how bad R.I.D. 2015 connected mm -hmm. to Prime, except at the very last minute. Too little, too late, man. Yeah. But I got to say, you know, I've seen maybe three or four episodes of R.I.D. of The Rid. I, I've seen the first four episodes of Cyberverse, and I really like it. I'm really enjoying the show. Yeah, you know, I don't really like Grimlock in the show, but overall, I I like the design, the animation, and what's up the with the episode there. length, though? What's up with the what? The length of the episodes. You know, they're, they don't take into a commercial aren't they break. Supposed to be web a webisodes or something? Or are they on Cartoon That's, Network? They're yeah. not on Cartoon Network yet, but I, I they're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're on they're on Card and Networks. You can actually find them on find them. They're on uh, the Hasbro YouTube channel, I think, right now. Ah. You, know, you can get them. But the first four episodes are pretty good. I, I like the story. You know, it's simple. It's something kids and adults can get into. It's not animated good, but it's it's pretty good. It's too bad the the toys are kind of shit though. Yeah. Yeah. But between between Cyberverse. And with what I've seen of Siege so far, there's very little mainline product I'm going to be buying. Which, again, brings me back to, to the point I was making earlier, 25 years from now. The kids who grew up with Cyberverse, what are they going to expect out of a Masterpiece figure? Something well, that's not crap. Given the fact that they've pretty much transitioned into what's being called the evergreen designs, where Optimus always looks like G1 Optimus and you know so on and so forth. I'd wager they'd probably want basically what we've got in Masterpiece now, but newer versions. You know, is it going to have to have the swinging arm action that the Cyberverse version has? Sure. Or the lack of paint? You know... Oh, don't, don't put too much paint on it, because then it won't be Cyberverse. To, the, okay. to that end, though, I'm... I'm I'm going to argue to the point that 
because right now we have kids that grew up with um, the Unicron trilogy. They're getting up old enough now to where they have disposable incomes. You know, they're getting their first jobs or getting into college and everything. They have some money and they can go buy better versions of toys. Unicron they can go trilogy. Yeah, they're old enough to drink. Yeah, they well, can. The, the vote. Beast Wars kids are finally getting their masterpieces. Let's let's say it like that. Very yeah. slowly, though. Very very slowly. Very expensively. Yeah. The thing is, my point is, is that. At, you know, a few years ago, if uh, whenever the Beast Wars kids were starting to get old enough um, to start having their own disposable income, they didn't have the same luxury as we had, uh, you know, having, like, lots of G1, you know, homages and, and all the like, two different reissue lines going at the same time. You had the Takara TFC book-style book reissues. You had the Hasbro Commemorative Series. Um, you know, a lot of them shared the same releases, a lot of them, a lot that were not, but you know, we got a lot of stuff like that, but what's the beast, what did the beast wars people got? They got that really short lived beast wars 20th line. That was just a few releases. Uh, they've gotten an homage here and there. Nothing really substantial. And now they've gotten three masterpieces. Well, technically four masterpieces if you count Shadow Panther. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm yeah, kind Universe of... 2.0 and what was the other one? Uh, Generations. Yeah, but they were still young enough at that time that those were still toys for them. Yeah. If you think about it. They were still on the ba- on the tail end probably of their of their demographic. But my, pro- my, my thing is, is that I wonder if there ever actually will be a time whenever we will see... Uh, Hasbro and Takara move away from. I, I know Generation One will always have an uh, an effect and and a presence in Transformers brand because it's what started it all. But I'm wondering if there will ever be a time when they will decrease the focus on that and increase the focus on later lines and giving us more and more better. And and, and I know that's bad grammar, but more and more better product. Well, you've Should. inspired me to ask a different question, and I'm going to ask Don this question. Speak to him directly, man to man. Dom. Yes. Do you think there'll be a time where you and I are old enough where we just kind of walk away from the brand? Yes. Because sooner or later... I mean, I find myself each year still liking a lot of the stuff, but the it's like I haven't even watched Cyberverse yet. Uh, I'm just... I think it's just the fact that I've been involved with it for so long, I'm burning out to a degree. Not that I'm going to stop collecting completely, but I look at what I have now, how much sheer amount of crap that I've got. And... You know, this goes back to, I don't mean to be depressed, it's just, um, you know, we've, we've all talked about our collections and what happens to our collections when we when we pass away. And, you know, we lost JD a couple of years ago on Radio Free Cybertron. And I, Chad here. And, Ch- and Chad here. And, uh, but, you know, JD's widow sent me about 20 boxes of his stuff. And I'm still trying to piece together and sell what I can but it's mostly Armada, Energon, and Cybertron, and there's just not a huge market for a lot of that stuff. But I'm 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 selling what I can, and I'm sending her, you know, what I can, although it's not as frequent as I want it to be. And I look at my stuff, and it's like, you know, I've got to stop. And I know, want to stop, but I don't want to get out of the fandom. Well, that's just it, you know. And I've got a really good friend that he collects. But he is absolutely not involved with the fandom in any way, shape, or form. He doesn't read the comics. He doesn't go to boards. He'll he'll watch he'll watch the media from time to time. But you know, it's like I have to use. Hey, oh, hey, by the way, the new masterpiece was announced because he would have never seen it because he just doesn't he doesn't listen to the podcasts any any podcasts. But he loves the, he loves the, he loves the brand. So he's he's like the opposite end of me. 
Whereas I'm and probably knows people. very little, if anything, about third party. Exactly. He 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 likes when I show him stuff that I think he'll like. Like the death, he's a big Death Head fan. He liked the Death Head that was done for TFCon last year, but the price was extremely prohibitive to him for what it was. So, and the reason I'm saying that is because I need to walk away more than I have. I need to, I need to say, okay. I'm stopping here. But as you can see by the two links, there's there's that Y Jane Blue Omega that's coming out that I would like to have, you know, a a, a different version, a different Omega mold in the blue. Uh, there's all this stuff coming out from Magic Square and Hot Toys, the smaller Legends figures. The, I saw the Ultra Magnus. There's a transmission video on Magic Square's Ultra Magnus. It's like a little mini masterpiece. It looks really good. That I don't really want it. So, yeah, Rick, I think there's going to be a time where I won't need to just say, that's it. Just because I don't want to put someone in, this, in a situation where they have to do some of my collection. Because when I leave, I want to leave just as little as possible for anybody to have to deal with. So, that kind of takes a little of a morbid turn, but it does relate to that episode we talked about this. And I think, I think every collector is going to run into that sooner or later and then the last of well, celebration. You know, I'm I'm in a different position. You know, I've got I've got two kids that I know of. Um <laughs> that I and, know of. <laughs> yeah, and I've I've already told my wife, like second wife, she she needs to have her own kids because I'm not I'm not putting any more out. I just need to take it all off the shaft, the balls. I just need like a metal plate down there so there's like no risk of me getting anyone pregnant. But I digress. Lord Varys. Um, you know I've I've <laughs> I'm setting up my collection room. Uh, it's it's a process. It's, it takes a long, long time. It's a lot of money. I've been in this house, you know, two and a half years, and it's it's not done yet. I, I, there's so much left to do. Uh, but I have my two girls, and they they like Transformers, and and especially Casey. And I have someone to leave it to. So I wonder if there'll ever be a point where I I step away. The, Don't care. There, yeah. There there was a, wa- a point where I stepped away and I didn't collect as vigorously, where I didn't pick up every licensed good, where I didn't collect all of R.I.D. I, there's R.I.D. figures I don't have. Or figures I only have one of from R.I.D. Um, so I've been kind of playing catch up with that, but I don't know. Will I ever get to that point? I don't know. I'm waiting for my girls to grow up, and then we'll be doing toy runs together for the sole purpose of putting something in the basement. So I have that to look forward to. You you guys will be uh, going around looking for masterpiece versions of uh, the retro Cyberverse figures. If If there's any stores left, and we don't have to just, you know... Order. Click on Amazon. Yeah. By that time, KB Toy Stores will have come and gone at Again. least twice. Yes. And Toys Are Re- Toys Are We will have risen and gone away. <laughs> toys are uh, Toys Are Nosotros. <laughs> <laughs> get, who get this? Son nosotros. That's a, that's a lot of words to put up on the side of a building. There. <laughs> Well, well, hey, what, they what, went to Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. I, th- I think it'd be more likely that, that KB Toys would come back and merge with the corpse of Toys R Us and they just call themselves Weeby Toys. Oh, God. I want to reach through the computer and slap you, Jim. I want you so badly. I've got some Jim, are you going to, to uh, TFCon? Huh? Are you going to the TFCon? No, no, I'm not oh, able thank to. God. I passed through and, Indianapolis and, on the way yeah. there. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. and on that note of implied violence, <laughs> I'm just saying it's been no. A there will be violence. Show. I got there will be violence. Too, you know? <laughs> all, all this, all this pent up nonsense. You know. Yeah. <laughs> He's like got like 40 years of pent up nonsense. Yeah, I mean, pretty, I, bad, pretty bad for 35. You know. I'm certainly am glad I was able to come back for the show today. It just. Right. Gives me such a warm feeling. <laughs> like, Didn't you miss us, Don? 
We missed you. <laughs> hey, hey, Dom, did you get anything yes. exciting in that you want to talk to us about it for a third or fourth time, like maybe like a white optimist or something? No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> well, my thing is, is that, you know, I, I, I do. I, I've, I've said it before on the show. I want to stop. There, there's a day I want to get to that, okay, I'm done buying the toys. That's why I didn't that's, ask you the question. That's not because necessary. you go through this. You're a yo-yo. You're no, one of the, those guys that goes up and, and down with the whole thing. No, and the thing is... Because you be friends of Orson. Unless he gets out of it, too, you're not out of it until he's out of it. The thing is, is I don't I want to place. get rid of the toys that I have. I don't want to. I just want to stop buying. That's not going to happen as long as you have the toys, dude. Because you're going to see something. Oh, wow, they made a cool masterpiece... So and so, shit. You know what? I'll Scourge. just get this one toy. Master I'll just get this one toy. Into a wheel. There's always you know? that one more piece. That one more. No, piece. I'll just get this. You know, masterpiece uh, huffer. I gotta have or this this micromaster masterpiece. You know, tote that I need in my collection or masterpiece you know, ma- master I have that right here. Uh, <laughs> I know, can master- touch it right now. <laughs> He's masterpiece axer doesn't actually transform. He's just really articulated and parts of him look like they transform but he actually doesn't transform <laughs> no you can still lay him down on his back in a whole roll though speaking of not transformers i want to spend the last few minutes of uh, of the podcast talking about the bumblebee movie uh <laughs> not transformers um i'll state right up the uh, right off the bat outside of the very first teaser trailer we have we have I haven't watched anything. I'm not going. Uh, I'm going to try and steer away from watching the trailer altogether. I want to be sitting in that theater, and I want to have no preconceptions. I want to in- see if I can enjoy this film. So as let a Transformers me talk film. shit on that right now because you know you're going to be on Twitter and you're oh here's a gift of the trailer. Oh, here's a side by side comparison of the trailer. That's what I'm going to see. To it. Yeah, you're going to be exposed to it, man. No matter what you do, and so, I don't oh, want to. How are we going to discuss this without spoilers, then? And spoiling it for drum. You know, yeah. How are we going to discuss this on your show without you know spoilers? You're oh, I really sp- like that one thing I saw in the trailer where the one guy did the one thing with the yeah. other dude. Who knew that other dude was in there? Wow. Yeah, or when, when they showed that shot of that one dude that we see, we've already if, seen. If I knew we were going of. to talk about spoilers, I would have had Sergio on here. See, here's here's what we're gonna <laughs> here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about how this trailer. I've I haven't been this excited for a Transformers movie since the first one, and I actually think this movie looks good. Yeah. So, Except for Starscream Blitzwing. I still think he's Starscream. I I, I think that guy was just misinformation. Like, ah, you know, we'll, we'll just you know campaign of misinformation. But from everything I've seen, man, how I wish this would have been a straight up reboot. I wish that had, this had been a straight up reboot because it it it's the it's the movie so many of us wanted in two thousand seven. It's not the movie that we needed. And it's not the movie that we got but it's the movie that we wanted. And from the few things that we've seen, Soundwave, that Ravage popping out of his chest. And spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. No, Optimus that's Prime, fine. Straight fine. up G1 Optimus Prime. You know, G1 Volkswagen car. This, I mean, granted, you're going to be weighed down with all the World War II shit in there about Bumblebee and Hot Rod and, ugh, yeah. <laughs> Well, while I'm thinking about it, too. He told for Grace to do like a fan edit where he takes out all the shit that connects it to the Michael Bay movies. You know, the ones that I worked on. And <laughs> <laughs> he just he just makes it the Bumblebee story. It's like 45 minutes long, but it, it's a damn good movie. Right. It's like you're not saying you're embarrassed, are you, uh, uh, Rick? I'm not embarrassed. I just, as a fan and as someone who takes pride that I, I've been able to create something in, in a, a medium that's seen by many people. I wish this had been a reboot. Do you because still think, um, let me, different. 
Let me throw it, this out there for you guys. Do you think this will be a game changer for the Transformers film franchise? I do. Say yes. I really do. I, I see lots of potential. I, I see this uh, has the, the opportunity to possibly be the Transformers equivalent to what X-Men First Class was to the X-Men brand. Agreed. Uh, that's just, a it, good it, analogy. Just, it goes back and it goes in a different direction. Yeah. And they and could you know, do that. And you know what happened after X-Men First Class? We got Days of Future Past, which was fucking amazing. Right. Uh, I know Dom hasn't seen any Transformers movies since the first one because he's still playing catch up. You no, know, I've seen all. I've seen, I've seen all the movies. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've seen all the movies to my regret, but I've seen all the <laughs> movies. Much to your chagrin. <laughs> Just remember this: every Transformers movie negates the story of the previous Transformers movie. Every movie does that. Mm. So, how will this negate the entire existence of the five movies that came before it? That's what I want to know. Like, are we going to see Grimlock walking around, right, in the background? We're going to have like a Grimlock cameo, or we're going to have like, well, uh, you know, I, 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 the thing, the thing is, I don't know. By the time the last night failed, because it didn't make all the money, it made some of the money. Not all the money. To it didn't fail per se. It just didn't meet didn't expectations. Meet, didn't meet the accolades of the previous films. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I stole that from an online reviewer that I watched for video games. So that was not my line, but them making all the money. But uh, I don't know how much they could have if if they got the idea to make the Bumblebee movie into something that, if successful, can be the launch for the new franchise. I don't know how much they could have gotten done between the last night ending, its subsequent failure, and then the movie Bone movie coming out. I don't know. I don't know how much they could have gotten done to make it not look like a chop job to make it a reboot. That, to, that's true. I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's like we could do this, but we'll gut the movie. It'll look like crap. Yeah. Or we can have a good movie and then sort of hand wave away the first five and then start with the next movie with whatever. And, or, and I think maybe they're trying to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, the kicker is going to be if, like, does Agent oh, Simmons God, show please up. don't let kicker be in there. Please. <laughs> I was just thinking the same <laughs> thing. Does, Energon kicker. If Agent Simmons shows up, then... We're kind of locked into something. Yeah. You know, See, like Bumblebee was in development before the last night came out. Yeah. So I understand your point. Yeah. Uh, there's only so much you can do rather than, you know, delay the film and then you delay product and license. And it's just a whole mess. Look at what happened with G.I. Joe 2. It killed the brand. Thanks, Dwayne Johnson. Oh, uh, don't put it on him. That He's probably the only good thing about the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, here's, That's not here's, saying much. You know, here's my thing. If the Bumblebee movie is successful enough and they have tweaked it enough that it can be the starting point for a new movie franchise. And it's if, successful. And, well, that's what I say. If it's successful and the content can be taken as it is for a reboot, they could always start with the first part of this new movie with everything in the first five still of taking place, but you pick up with the movie universe Transformers the movie. Have that have Megatron and um, Optimus' final fight on Earth, and, and then Hot Rod becomes Rodimus Prime, and basically do post-movie season three of the movie. Since the whole Unicron thing will basically probably just have to be kind of hand-waved away or addressed later. While that that sounds <sighs> awesome, Don, I would love to see that. Seeing the track record that we've seen in previous Transformer movies, we have all this fan wink that we would love to see. You know, yeah. they're, uh, uh, we, I, I want to see them do this. <laughs> I want to see them do that. We just get a faint shadow of what we've what they right. are you know it's like we wanted to see combiners and we got that monstrosity that is the devastator you yeah. know 
we wanted to see Headmasters, and we got Cogman. That was never a Headmaster in the, because it's, all the scenes were cut. Yeah, they called yeah. him a Headmaster though. They just didn't yeah. show it. Yeah, right. Was was he? A, did they actually make Headmaster footage? Supposedly, okay. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it was filmed and not shown or not filmed. But he's like, like Jim says. He's referenced as a headmaster. Mm. The Nitro Zeus toy I, has compatibility with Cogman. I think I though, though meant, in the like, movie, headmaster, like he's the yeah, headmaster yeah, of, of the, the school. Estate. It, it was yeah. it was a no, double meaning, but yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, if what if they it? do a star in the in the, after Bumblebee, if they do a Star Wars screen crawl, or through flashback rectify all the unicron stuff i know i know it wouldn't be fair to, to people who want to see how that pans out but it's too much of a painted into a corner and and maybe you could have optimus and megatron fighting because of the whole unicron thing it ties up through the through that part of the movie with ties to bumblebee and then you have Rodimus's hero's journey to become Rodimus Prime, and so basically everything happened, but it's now in the past. We're looking at season three of the Transformers live action movie verse going forward, and then they can take what they learned with Bumblebee and hopefully make better movies. I'm 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 not sure that, more... that 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 type of approach would would necessarily work quite so well given the track record of the live action films so far. But uh, I I, I just I have a feeling that you know we would probably end up with Michael Bay presents Carnage in C minor. Well, no, I'm I'm saying but Michael it, Bay's not directing it anymore. Yeah. But see, this was... that is true. That is true. I forgot about that. You're right. You're yeah, right. I, um, that's but, the one big hope. They've already about established that the Unicron is Earth. So if they did the movie thing, would he just would he show up out of the cosmos and eat himself, or how's that work? No, no, I'm saying they. Again, it's not the best storytelling device, but if they threw flashback or threw Optimus and Megatron were fighting, and it reveals during the course of the fight how all that played out. Yes, it would not be the ideal situation, but. If what we're seeing in Bumblebee, which I think has given us all a little bit more hope for a good movie compared to what we usually get when we see these movies, trailers and previews and such. Not enough for a Blue Lantern ring, but a little bit of hope. I think what's more likely is that they pull like a Halloween where it's like all those other movies didn't happen. No, those, those movies didn't happen. This is the, this is the real sequel to the 1978 yeah. movie, you know, or maybe or maybe what they'll do is they'll pull a Star Trek uh, 2009 and the fight with Unicron somehow <laughs> sh- somehow shunts Bumblebee and a new core cast of characters into a different Optimus universe, in, slightly into different, a di- in, into a into a new parallel universe. So does that mean I- that Bumblebee's going to go to some ice planet and run into? G1 Optimus Prime in the cave? No, no a time-traveling elderly Shia LaBeouf. No, but, I, but I, I'm just saying... I, I'm just saying... Right. I'm just saying Jim, that... Jim, you've redeemed yourself. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. So, I, again, this is way out there, and I know people are shaking their heads saying, Don, that's not possible. But I'm just saying, if they don't want to piss off the fans of these first 10 years... And they want to re- do a new slate. If they take what they've learned from this Bumblebee movie with, with what we're seeing so far, make the new first movie in the same spirit as this Bumblebee movie as it appears to be. If they do the whole alternate continuity, maybe destroying Unicron did a did a reset. And at, it, at the it, end of the movie, what's going to happen is. You know, Something. Half the characters turn to ash and they just disappear. <laughs> well, I, I, wait I, a I, minute. That's already been done. Gauntlet. Somebody yeah. activates the Unicron gauntlet, right? Yeah. They got to collect. They got to collect all six matrices. No, no the Unicron, plant. The Unicron Optimus, gauntlet. Optimus, I don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the, no, the Unicron. Bumble it'd be a gauntlet so, with so. all thirteen Prime Masters. Well, then Unicron will never complete it. No, many cons. Have... They stick all yeah, over yeah. the gauntlet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, that's 
that's my theory is that what they could do, there's no telling what's going to happen. We could either be incredibly surprised or like, oh, they're doing this again. Okay. Time That's part to- of the reason why I want to stay from away from as much of the... I mean, I, I'm not going to say I will not watch a trailer at all because, like Rick said, there's going to be so much out there. I just don't want to be spoiled on, on as much of the plot as as possible. Um, you know, I, I, I was rather successful with it with uh, Age of Extinction. You know, I watched the teaser trailer and I watched, I think, the very first movie trailer that came out. And that was it. And the only thing I saw regarding Age of Extinction was, you know, every now and then somebody would show up a picture, well, this is a hot rod design. You know, this is what he's going to look like. He's going to be this kind of Lambo. Uh, that's fine. But I don't want the entirety of the movie to be spoiled. That being said, I still didn't enjoy Age of Extinction. And it wasn't because the action wasn't good. It wasn't because I didn't like the character choices and everything. I'm fine with Hot Rod having that stupid French accent. It's, it's eh. But the story was just horrible, in my opinion. All right, let me That's ask my you opinion. This. Let me ask you this. When the first Transformers movie came back way out in 2007, I was jazzed. Did you see? Did you see every single trailer you could? Yes. And was the movie ruined for you? No. But, uh, I believe it was Revenge of the Fallen. I, I did the same thing, and the movie was kind of ruined for me. The movie was ruined the day it was ended and put on the shelf to be edited. That thing came out ruined. Well, well that's no, mainly right, because right, of a right, writer strike. Revenge yeah. of the Fallen yeah. is total and complete dreck. Well, r- it's writer got strike or no writer strike? Your face. Where did the wrecking balls come from? Balls are yeah. none, of those, none of those Constructicons had a wrecking ball. They were yeah. there for comedic uh, value, uh, Jim, and that's the, it. I mean, yeah, yeah the rule, did, the rule, did, the rule of funny covers did, that. Well, I'm just trying to like, like, did, did they all, did they wait all, until he was combined in order to descend or? Did one of them hang well, lower than you know, the other? It's possible there were other Maybe. Constructicons we didn't see. The whole idea of Devastator in the movie was that the more Constructicons you had, the bigger he could be. So if he had a thousand Constructicons, he could be ginormous. Was, he, was that ever established? That, it wasn't established, but that was the idea that we you know we knew that behind the scenes. So he's, that's, he's that's basically... That's why there were different Constructicons running around the battlefield while Devastator uh, is uh, that means destroying he So... So he's not so much combiner as much as he is Lego. No, no, for the Digimon fans watching, Jim. he's Shoutmon he's Cross 7. Mm. Oh, Jim. Shoutmon Cross 7. God. I was saying, you're, like, you're talking infinite combination. Infinite and infinite com- possibilities. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, infinite combination of crap plus crap still equals crap. Well, I believe we've had some great uh, thoughts and discussion uh, brought up tonight. I think you guys have uh, put put out some good ideas. Hope you guys who, uh, who are watching and listening uh, have enjoyed it. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments and questions. Post them in the comments here on the, uh, on the video or go to our uh, Twitter page, at TFYLP. Uh, love to hear from you on there. And as well as our Facebook page at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Give me your face. Yes. Give um, me your face. I want to put this uh, this feeler out there. Uh, anybody that wants to put out uh, a question that or a topic that you would love to, for us to either revisit or something that we haven't even touched on, uh, maybe that we could possibly touch on, um, Feel free to send us a message or tweet it to us or post it on our Facebook page. Um, I'm kind of wanting to do like another listener question uh, episode. Uh, we've had a couple of those in the past that seem really good. Um, you know, I, I really want to get as many out there as possible. You know, that way if we can do maybe a, a quick fire some some questions too. Um, don't be shy. Feel free to ask. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you guys have any uh, closing thoughts or comments? Well, on on the Bumblebee movie, I'm just I, the more I see of it, the more I'm thinking he's just going to do nothing but the beeps and the radio stuff. I'm hoping they do some kind of flashback at some point, maybe earlier in the film or whatever, 
where we actually see Bumblebee speak before his voice gets damaged, or actually see that happen to him. You know, I'm, I'm hoping they, they at least address that in some way. Because I, I would love, I mean, I know it's the fanboy in me, but I, I would love to hear uh, Dan Gilvis and, uh, and his voice come out of Bumblebee at least once. We can want and crap in one hand, or want in one I, hand and crap in the other and see which one fills up faster. Yeah. I but, was, but, uh, I'm just hoping for a Peter Cullen cameo as the avatar of the guy who's driving the Optimus truck. That's all I've ever wanted. Well, That's all I've ever wanted. I do have to give props to John Bailey for uh, getting into the trailer, though. This, this most recent one where you hear uh, where you hear Optimus speaking, uh, he says Bumblebee, and that is Cullen, but the rest of the, the phrase is spoken by John Bailey. So they, oh. they kind of blended the two. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's subtle, but you notice it. How do you know that? You can hear it. You you can you can tell Peter. Do you Cullen's know that optimus, for a fact? John Bailey's optimus. Yeah. Do you know that for a fact? Just listen to it for yourself. Do you I, know, I know it for a in fact? The I'm asking group. if you know it for a fact because what you're doing is spreading fake news. Don't be a trumper. I'm telling you, I posted the video. As okay. the, so as you don't the, know it for, you don't know for, a, fact. for a fact. As you the don't source, know it for a fact. you can go through and listen you for yourself and okay. reach your own conclusion. But in my okay, your own conclusion. It, it, okay, let me, your let me own this. Conclusions may not be based on fact. In my opinion, there. Uh, th- okay, thank my, you. Okay, opinion, there we go. Thank you. I believe it to be John Bailey for most of that phrase, except for the word "bumblebee," which is spoken, in my opinion, by Peter Cullen. The fact probably that they went two different thing. actors probably like violates all sorts of rules, mm-hmm. seeing how they're both still living. So right. that violates all sorts of like union rules, in my opinion. So I doubt uh, that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is also for a movie trailer too. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Don, he, you have any haircut? Stupid, before. Jim. <laughs> It's it's in the TF Wild P group. Your haircut's stupid, and it makes me mad. Ah, what was that during? I, I couldn't. I couldn't Do you have any it. closing thoughts or comments? Uh, well, one, it's good to be back. I apologize for not being on. It's just with my work schedule now, it's very hard to be off early. Uh, well, know, hopefully we, now that we're going to be recording a little bit right. later, it should help. Um, you know, going again, going into the holiday season. You know, I'm sure we'll have a holiday themed, themed episode coming up uh, before too long on all that. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, yeah, uh, just again, mm-hmm. as a heads up, all the toys are going to be rolling out, you know, no pun intended, you know, so, Have you know, to try out. to help, you know, try to help your fellow collectors out. Uh, and again, like we did, like we did an RFC for Operation Beehive, if you see a lot of toys Beehive. that are, you know, that are, you know, clogging the shelves and Cyberverse and other, other things that, you know, you think the kids would enjoy, for the Salvation Army or whatever, whatever group is taking up toys, uh, the Marine Corps does it a lot. So whatever group you feel most comfortable donating to, uh, you know, use this opportunity to donate some good toys and to help clear the shelves for other product to come out. You know, it's 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 just a good thing to do at this time of year. You know, and Absolutely. also help you if you if you see something new, help your fellow collectors out until because we're still having distribution problems. Yes. Stuff ain't showing Nova up. Star. There's I, still some people out there looking for Nova Star. Yeah. So yes. just you know, going in, going into going into the holiday season, just everyone try to help out your fellow fans as best you can. Just because this like these Walmart reissues, they're going to be probably sporadic at best for a while. And if so. they do hit shelves, they're probably not going to last long. Yeah. You know, le- the only thing I'm looking for is Devastator because I have I have the gift set. I got it at Sears Outlet for Christmas in July. For fourteen dollars, but in nineteen eighty six, but I would like a better box, one in the box, just for my nostalgia purposes. But you know, just everyone try to help everybody out. You know, report when you find stuff, and let's just try to help everybody out going into the holiday season because the distribution is bad enough. We we all need help finding this. So help help clear the shelves for the stores to not restock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jim, if you well, Jim, if you want to get cynical about it, sure. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week on TFYLP. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everybody. Night, all. Take care. Good night. Stop holding up that piece of crap, Jim. Nobody cares. <laughs>